What's up my pre-calc people? In this video, we're gonna talk about solving trigonometric equations, but we're going to do level two problems, which means they're gonna require some factoring in order to solve. So let's dive right into it so you can see how to solve these problems really easy using some factoring strategy. All right, so in this very first problem here, we're asked to solve for all solutions from zero to two pi. All right, so the first thing I notice is, again, the whole point of this is that we're gonna need some factoring, right? So I have two terms. Remember, terms are anything separated by minus or plus signs. So I have two terms, and I'm always looking for what can I factor out? Now, without saying, I hope you already know this, that don't ever try to factor unless you already have a zero on one side. So you need to get that zero first, then you can go ahead and factor. So what do both of these terms have? They both have a sign of X in common, so I can factor it out. When you factor out, you divide it away. So if I take this first term and divide away a sign of X, I'm left with a square root of three. And the second term, if I divide away the sign of X, I'm left with minus two cosine of x equals zero. All right, now that I factor, I'm gonna use a very well-known property called the zero product property that says basically if you have something times something else and that something equals zero, the product of those two a and b equals zero, then a equals zero or b equals zero. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna say, all right, sine of x could equal zero because if this part right here is zero, it doesn't even matter what that second part is, I'm gonna get zero or the radical three minus two cosine of x could equal zero, because if this back part is zero, it doesn't even matter what the front part is, I'm gonna get a zero overall. But again, you gotta have a zero over here if you're gonna factor. All right, so the first equation is, where is sine of x equal to zero? Well, that's a pretty simple one. Grab your unit circle if you need to, and we're looking at where is the y coordinate zero, and that happens at zero, that also happens at pi. Now, it, happens, it also happens at two pi, and three pi, and four pi, and five pi, but we only want answers starting at zero and ending at two pi, not equal to two pi though, equal to zero. So the two answers here are gonna be zero and pi. Zero and pi is where we see a sine value of zero. So zero and pi. All right, now we're gonna solve this other one. Let's see here. So my goal is to isolate the trig function. So I'm gonna subtract the radical three from both sides. So I get negative two cosine of x equals negative radical three. Then I'm gonna divide both sides by negative two and I get cosine of x equals positive radical three over two. Two negatives made a positive. So now I'm going back to my unit circle. I'm saying, where is cosine equaling radical three over two? So cosine is the X coordinate from the unit circle. So I see an X coordinate of radical three at pi over six. And I also see an X coordinate of radical three over two at 11 pi over six. So I have two more answers to report here, pi over six and 11 pi over six. This final equation has four total answers for what can make this equation equal to zero. All right, let's take a look at this next problem here. So once again, I got a cosine squared equals negative cosine of x. And I wanna remind you one more time that officially that is cosine all squared, but mathematicians don't wanna write parentheses all the time. And if they forget the parentheses, they might accidentally think that the x or the angle is being squared. So that's why we put the little square right there, emphasizing cosine of x all squared. All right, now I want to factor, but I can't factor until I have a zero on one side. So let's add the cosine to the other side. So I get cosine squared of X plus cosine of X equals zero. Now I could factor. I have two terms. There's the first term. There's the second term. What do both terms have in common that I could factor out? Well, they both have a cosine of X. So when I factor, which is dividing away from this first term, cosine squared divided by cosine is gonna leave us with a cosine. From the second term, cosine divided by cosine is gonna leave us with a one. All right, so now I'm gonna use that zero product property, either cosine of X equals zero, or cosine of x plus one equals zero. All right, this first one's rather easy. Where's cosine of x equal to zero? And I hope you guys are okay. I'm gonna slowly not show the unit circle as much, but that's gonna happen at pi over two and three pi over two. Now, notice they want all solutions. So I gotta be careful here because I don't wanna just write pi over two and three pi over two. I wanna make sure I realize that if I add a full circle as many times as I want, I'm gonna get more and more and more answers. So I can actually add on the two pi k to represent more and more answers. Now, this does not always happen, but if you notice these two answers, they are a half a circle away from each other. So if I just do pi over two plus pi k, a half a circle, that will cover the three pi over two, and then the next answer, and then the next answer, the next answer, the next answer, the next answer. And remember, k could be a negative, so that's why you could even go backwards. So hopefully that makes sense. So you could even have pi over two plus pi k, and that'll cover the three pi over two as well.
All right, now we're going to solve the second one here. So I'm going to subtract one from both sides. So I get cosine of x equals negative one. And where is uh, the cosine value of an angle negative one? That of, that of course happens at pi. And then again, it's going to happen a full circle as many times as I want over and over and over again. That way I'm representing all solutions. So be careful when it says all solutions, you got to make sure you add on something that's going to allow for there to be these infinite solutions. All right, here is another one. Now, this is another uh, factoring problem. Now, this time I have three terms, so I cannot just do the method of factoring out the greatest common factor because be th between my three terms, there is no common value. Right? Between the first two, I could factor out a sign, but that doesn't work, right? You've got to factor something from all the terms. So um, I'm going to show you something that might help some students here. Some students will actually come to the side. They'll say, okay, I, just for a moment, I'm going to let W equal sine of X. And then I'm going to get W squared minus W plus 2 equals 0. Again, all I'm doing is letting W equal sine of X. Now they say, oh, that's an easy one to factor. I could factor that one in my slate. That's going to be W and W. And then I need a 1 and a 2. And the 2 has to be negative. That way, when I add those outside and inside terms, I get a negative W in the middle. And if you're like, boy, I cannot factor that so fast, well, then you might want to pause and make sure you understand how to factor that. So this means that W plus 1 equals 0 or W minus 2 equals 0, which means W equals negative 1 or W equals 2. But I'm not done yet. Now I'm going to put the trig back in. So I'm going to replace that sign or the W with a sine of X. So I have sine of X equals negative 1 or sine of X equals 2. All right, where is sine of X equal to negative 1? That happens at 3 pi over 2. I'm going to flash that unit circle real quick just so you could see that that happens right down there. But it wants all solutions, so every time I rotate a full circle, as many times as I want, positive or negative, I'm going to get another answer. Now, what about this one? Where is sine of x equal 2? Well, if you look at your unit circle, you're like, dang, that doesn't happen anywhere. And that's right. Remember, the range for sine and cosine is negative 1 to 1, so sine of x will never equal 2. It'll never, ever, ever, ever happen. Another explanation for that is technically sine is the y-coordinate divided by the radius. So the radius on a unit circle is 1, but you could never have a y-coordinate be bigger than your radius, if you think about it, right? So again, another reason that this has no solutions. So you can write no solutions coming from that second equation. So the only answer is 3 pi over 2, and then, again, adding on, a, you know, a full circle 2 pi as many times as we want. All right, here's another one very, very similar to that. Now, if you want to do that W method, some kids, like, need to do that. They say, all right, W equals cosine of X, or in this case, cosine of theta. That's totally fine. Like, if that helps you, that's great. But some kids are like, no, they could visually see it, and they could factor it without having to do that. So they just think, okay, I'm going to break apart the 2 cosines theta into 2 cosine of theta times cosine of theta. I'm going to break apart a 1. That's 1 times 1. And let's see here. I need this to be a negative and this to be a positive. That way on the outside, I get a negative 2 cosine theta. On the inside, I get a positive 1 cosine theta. And those are going to combine to make the negative cosine that's in the middle. So just basic factoring, nothing too, too hard there. All right, so now I'm going to separate these using the zero product property. 2 cosine of theta plus 1 equals 0 or cosine of theta minus 1 equals 0. Solve each separately. This one I'm going to, let's see here, get a little messy here. Subtract the 1, so I get a negative 1, then divide by 2. So cosine of theta equals negative 1 half. I'm only looking for answers on a unit circle from 0 to 2 pi. So I'm going to flash that unit circle real quick. Where do I see a cosine of negative 1 half? I see it happening at 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Hopefully you're cool with me doing that pretty quickly. Again, hopefully we're getting more used to understanding that unit circle so you guys can know these pretty quick. This one over here is going to be cosine of theta equals 1. And that, of course, happens at 0. Now, that also happens at 2 pi. But notice there's no equal sign on the 2 pi. That's because 0 and 2 pi are coterminal. So I want to give the answer that's in the interval, and that's just 0. So three answers to this equation right here. Hopefully not too, too bad. Again, factoring should be fun, right? Even though everybody doesn't think so. All right, here's another one with a little different setup, but this is actually common, which you might see on the AP exam. So we say find all values for which f of x and g of x are equal. So we have two functions here, and they're telling us, hey, where are they equal? So they're going to make us go ahead and actually set them equal to each other and uh, solve. All right, let's see if we could do this. Now, once again, um, I want to factor. You cannot factor unless you get everything on one side with a zero on the other. So typically, we like that square value to be positive. So I'm going to move the radical 3 to the other side. 
So I get two sine squared of x minus radical three sine of x equals zero. Then I have two terms, and I said, well, what do those two terms have in common? So I can factor out the GCF, um, the greatest common factor, and that's going to be sine of x. And when you factor, you divide away. So when I divide it from this first term right here, I get two sine of x. When I divide it from the back term, I just get negative radical three. And now I have two pretty simple equations to solve because using the zero product property, sine of x equals zero, or two sine of x minus radical three equals zero. All right, where is sine equal to zero? Just check on out that unit circle there. It's going to happen at zero and pi. So I have two answers there, zero and pi. And then this one's pretty easy to solve as well. I'm going to add the radical three, then divide by the two. So I get sine of x equals radical three over two. And where does that happen? That happens at pi over three. And that also happens at two pi over three. So pi over three and two pi over three are the answers to that one. Pi over three and two pi over three. So I have four total answers to this equation in that unit circle from zero to two pi. All right, here is another one. All right, so once again, I already got a zero on one side. That's cool. I only have two terms. So I'm looking for that greatest common factor. What could I factor out? Both terms have a cosine of x that can be factored out. When you factor out, you divide away. So cosine squared divided away by that cosine is going to be a cosine of x. This back term, sine x, cosine x, when I divide away that cosine, I'm left with just negative sine of x equals zero. All right, so the first one, using the zero product property, is cosine of x equals zero. That's going to take us all about 10 seconds to solve. And then we have cosine of x minus sine of x equals zero. All right, that's going to be a little bit tricky. So let's do this first one here. Where is cosine of x equal to zero? That should be a pretty easy one. That's going to happen right up here at pi over two or three pi over two. Now they do want all solutions. So this is another one where I could say pi over two plus pi k. And that's actually going to cover the three pi over two. Because if I start with pi over two, add pi, add pi, Add pi, add pi, I'm just going to keep getting answers. So you can also list them separate and then add the 2 pi k if you prefer, no big deal. All right, now this next one's a little bit tricky to solve. So um, you're like, man, cosine of x minus sine of x, like do I need to factor again? But there's nothing common to factor out. So this one's actually pretty cool how easy this is. I'm going to add the sine to the other side. So I get cosine of x equals sine of x. Now that actually should make a lot of sense. Where does cosine and sine equal each other? So what angle has the same x-coordinate as it does the y-coordinate, because cosine is the x-coordinate from the unit circle, sine is the y-coordinate from the unit circle. So let's go to a unit circle, and where do you see the sine and the cosine, the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate are the same? Aha, pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. That's where sine and cosine are identical. 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4, they're close, but one's negative, so they're not equal. So that's why we have answers at pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. All right, but if we're really, really good, remember we want to give all solutions, we could just do pi over four plus pi k. And I'll show you real, why real quick, because if we start right here at pi over four, sorry for this messiness, but I don't know, it makes sense to me to circle it real big, right? And if I just add a half circle, I arrive at five pi over four, add another circle, I arrive at the back to that same coterminal spot, and then so forth. But once again, you could list pi over four and five pi over four separately, or if you truly understand what's going on, you understand how adding pi covers both of them. All right, at this point, I'm gonna do a couple more problems. Um, I always tell kids, the more problems you watch, the better you're going to be. But if you maybe want to pause and try these problems on your own and then hit play and see if the answers match up, that might be a good idea as well. I just want to give you guys as many practice items as possible. All right, so this is going to be another factoring problem. If you want to let W equal sine of X, if that helps you. So for some kids, that really, really helps. Um, others, they're like, nah, I don't need to do that. You know, it's really up to you, however you feel. But let's see here. How do I factor this trinomial? This one's not too bad. So I need a 2W and a 1W. The only way to break apart a 1 is a 1 and a 1, and I want them both to be negative. That way, when they multiply, they make the positive one in the back. Outside is a negative 2w. Inside is a negative 1w. That gets that negative 3w in the middle there. All right, so 2w minus 1 equals 0, or w minus 1 equals 0. And uh, let's solve this real quick. I'm going to add 1, divide by 2, so w equals a half, or w equals 1. But now I'm going to bring the trig back into the problem. I'm going to replace that w with sine of x equals a half or sine of x equals one. And let's see here, where does sine of x equal a half? Right there at pi over six and five pi over six. 
pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. Now, I didn't actually have directions up here. If I want all sorts of odds, let's just say we're looking for solutions from 0 to 2 pi. And then where is sine equal to 1? That, of course, happens right up here at pi over 2. All right, so not too bad there. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense. Pretty easy there. Um, but again, those are good ones. And again, if you need to use the W method, go right ahead. All right, here's another one. And I want to. I, this is a really good problem. I want to make sure I show this because here's what a lot of kids do. They divide a cosine on both sides and they cancel out these cosines. Don't do that. Do not do that. Because when you do that, you're dividing away answers. And we do not ever want to divide away answers. So again, the whole point of this video is teaching you how to solve by factoring. So I'm going to subtract the radical 2 cosine of x to the other side, therefore getting a 0. And once I have a 0, I can factor. Both terms have a cosine. So instead of dividing the cosine and throwing it in the trash can, I'm factoring it out. Therefore, it's still there, right? It's not, it's not gone. I just factored it out and then throw it away. And that's why I would stay away from dividing like that because then you lose solutions. All right, so again, I factor out the cosine, leaving behind a sine of x and a negative radical 2. All right, so zero product property. Cosine of x equals zero or sine of x minus radical 2 equals zero. Let's do cosine of x equals zero because that's really easy. That's going to happen right here, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 and then this one over here is going to be sine of x equals radical 2 and you're like oh I see radical 2 over 2 but that's not right well grab a calculator radical 2 if you need to is 1.414 approximately and you're like, well, wait a minute, 1.414, that a sine can never be that, right? The range of sine and cosine is negative 1 to 1. So it's impossible for sine to ever be 1.414. Um, it'll be 1 or negative 1, but it can't be bigger than that. So this is another one where it looks like we should be able to solve it because we see that radical 2, but it's not radical 2 over 2, right? So that's different. So this actually has no solutions. So the only solutions to this problem are pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So be careful with problems like that. All right, last problem of the day here, another one of these factoring ones. Again, if you're one of those kids, and again, I was this kid, I needed to use W, so it, so it made sense to me. It just looks easier to work on if I take away the cosines. So all right, this is a pretty easy one to factor. Hopefully nothing too difficult here. So I'm going to break apart the W squared, W and W. Uh, five, I'm going to do two and, oh no, two and three won't work. This is factoring, right? You try things and it doesn't work. Two... Um, times 3 is 6. It doesn't work at all. So I just saw 5 and I was thinking 2 and 3, but I have to multiply to get 5. And that's actually easy because 5 is a prime number. So I only got 1 and 5 and they both need to be positive. That way they multiply to get the positive 5 and on the outside we get a 5w, inside we get a 1w. That's going to make the 6w in the middle. So w plus 1 equals 0, w plus 5 equals 0, w equals negative 1 or w equals negative 5. Now I'm going to bring the trig back in, replacing w with cosine of x equals negative 1 and cosine of x equals negative 5. All right, where is cosine of x equal to negative 1? Ah, come on, that happens at pi. You guys should know that without even having to look at the unit circle. And where is cosine negative 5? Nowhere. Remember, the range for sine and cosine is negative 1 to 1, so it'll never be that low. Cosine just cannot be that low. And again, if you, another way of making sense of that is you're going to divide by the radius, right? And negative 5 divided by 1, well, that means that my x is bigger than the radius, and that just can't happen. That's not going to work. So um, that's it. That's the answer to that one right there. Pi is the only answer from 0 to 2 pi. All right, so hopefully factoring made a lot of sense. It, it can be a little bit challenging, especially if you're not good at factoring to begin with. But hopefully I um, went through enough examples and showed you enough that you could you know, apply this in some problems on your own. Best of luck.